What's up, everybody? Welcome to Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about lighting, photography, gear, techniques, whatever it is you want to talk about, mostly pertaining to lighting because that's what we do here. Uh, but welcome to Geared Up. I'm Chris, if you've never met me before. How's it going? Today, we're going to be talking about Pro Packs. Okay, I'm just joking. We're not talking about Pro Packs because we launched... Um, we... <laughs> I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> today we're talking about hard light and soft light with the A series of lights. And why are we talking about that? If you haven't noticed already, uh, today we launched two new light shapers. Uh, I guess technically we launched three new light shapers uh, for the click line of modifiers. And, and for anyone who wonders, the click line is made for the A series and technically the C series, uh, or at least the C1 plus. So click line of modifiers for the A-series. Good to know. The first thing, the one that I'm honestly the most excited about is this one right here. This is the click magnum. I remember, uh, I remember being in Sweden a bunch of years ago and talking about how awesome it would be to have a magnum reflector for the, uh, for the A, A, I think it was A1X at the time. Uh, this is cool. So, just like you would expect from any of the Magnum reflectors, this is a really high output reflector for your A-series lights. Cool. Still magnetized to the back. So it's really, it, you know, I don't know if I should magnetize my laptop, but um, uh, it's, it's solid state drive. So it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but um, cool. So let's just take this down, but it's magnetized. So it goes on just like that. Really, really easy to, to it's not as easy to take off, which is nice because you don't have to worry about someone like, smacking it. You don't have to worry about it shaking off, which is nice. The magnets are pretty strong. So, but it just clicks on like that and you get up to one, I think technically it's like 1.8 stops more light output. So almost two stops more light output from your A series light than you would have gotten with it not on there, which is pretty awesome. So first and foremost, uh, if you need it, if you're working outside and you need to be able to power up a little bit more in order to compete with the ambient light, awesome or if you're inside the thing that's really cool about this is because of once again the increased output you can actually power down and that's going to save you battery life so if you're trying to walk the line between like flashes and your battery life and stuff like that maybe this is something you want to look into um it's about a 50 degree beam spread which most magnums are uh the zoom spread can be varied on the traditional magnum and the ocf magnum the only thing that's a little bit different with this Magnum than those is there's no zooming ability. So kind of when you put it onto your light, it is what it is. With that being, you know, being is what it is, the other cool thing about the launch of this thing is, actually, let me leave that one up there. The other cool launch about uh, thing about the launch of this is that it actually comes with a 20 degree grid in the case. So it just snaps right over the front. And now you can actually take the light from your magnum reflector and just focus it a little bit more. And we're going to uh, we're going to photograph here in a second. I'm going to show you what each one of these modifiers looks like. It should be really, really cool. So but the magnum reflector is dope. It comes with a little carry case for you to um, keep with you. I don't actually have the carry case. I got these before the carrying cases were finished. So um, very, very cool modifier. Again, I'm so excited about this. I, I travel all the time with my A2 in my bag right next to my camera. Uh, that's also going to be my bag from now on. So very cool stuff. Now let's jump into soft light because we release some more click soft boxes. So the uh, original click soft box is this one here. This is the original two footer. Pops open real, real easy. Cool. So now we are selling a couple of larger sizes. So uh, I'll hold them up side by side so you can see them. Actually, let's go to this one because uh, yeah. then people can see all of them. So here is the original the 24 inch this one is the 2.3 which is uh 27 inches and then this 2.7 uh, which is 31 inches so you can kind of see the size differences they're not terribly uh terribly different but you can see that you're going to get softer light as you move up in the the realm i mean this is the thing you have aside and then you get to walk the line between how much uh you want to carry uh, or how big of a, a kit you'd like to, to have with it. So I'm gonna break these down and show you kind of how they look side by side in size. So you can understand too what I'm talking about with that way. So obviously with the soft boxes being um, 
with the soft boxes being bigger, oh yeah, I want to take the A2 off of there before I break this thing down. So with the soft boxes being different sizes, obviously you're going to get different softnesses out of the tools themselves, but when they're broken down, they're also different sizes. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out your kit, how you want to travel and stuff like that. So if you look at the original click soft box, the two foot, right? And then you compare it to the, let me try to see if you can see this a little bit better. Try to close it down as flat as I can, get some of the air out of it so you guys can kind of see it side by side. So if you go with like the 27 inch, you can see you have a little bit more length down here. Not that big of a deal. And then if you go with the 31 inch, let's get the diffuser kind of stuff. Yeah, they're all being compared with the original. So you can kind of see what you're, um, what's changing. So this is where you're gonna kind of start to see some of the differences in how you're gonna pack out your light, right? So the 31 inch versus the 24 inch, you have a little more space down here. It's not that big of a deal, but it's something you wanna keep in mind when you're trying to figure out, you know, which one of these soft boxes you'd like to add to your arsenal, right? It's cool. So really, really cool sizes. Again, we're gonna photograph with all of them here in just a second so you can see what they look like. Um, let's talk about, oh, you know what? Um, and we can talk about this with the Magnum too, because I glossed, I actually didn't even gloss over it. I just totally missed it. So when you're working with your click soft boxes, let's talk about some do's and some don'ts, right? First do, if you want to add a light shipping tool, like if you want to gel the inside of your click soft box, the inside of all the click soft boxes right here has a magnetic mount. That's where your gels go. Okay, you never want to put anything between your light and the soft box, right? This has a pretty good hold. If I pull on it pretty good, it, it'll come loose. Or if you knock it down like that with a little bit of leverage, it'll come loose. But watch this. If you take the same gel and you put it on the outside, I can't, I can't let go of the A2. Cool? So never put anything between your light and the soft box. That's why the inside of these things are magnetized. So that's where you want to make sure you put your gels. So again, take that, click it to the inside, and now you have a lot more hold there. If you're in an environment where you're, um, say you're an, an event shooter or something like that, or you're at a wedding like that or something, and there's going to be a lot of people moving around your stuff, you want to make sure that you do something to uh, make sure that, if the magnets bust loose, because if you hit this thing hard enough, they'll come loose. It just is what it is. Magnets aren't, I mean, some magnets are crazy, but you know, these aren't going to stop a lot of stuff. Cool. You can bust it loose. What I do is Peak Design makes this really, really dope little locking thing, right? And I take a little wrist strap. Peak Design. Peak Design, Peak cool. design makes this. It's like this cool little, uh, you can get them on their website. I don't even know what they're called, but I just pop it right into the quarter 20 of the A2. This doesn't work as much with the uh, A10, but you can pop that in the quarter 20. And now if it falls, it has a pretty secure strap, right? So, and then you can just put this around, put the wrist strap part portion around the light stand, and now you have a tether. Pfft. There's also tons of safety cables out there too. But again, if you're working in environments with the click soft box, and you know that people are going to be moving around it, or you're going to be moving it a lot, just extra little, extra little safety thing right there so oh and um, i popped mine out christian is asking can the first ocf gel slash grid holder go over the top of the new click magnum reflector ocf no uh the ocf um so this is the first ocf gel so you're talking about ocf gels. so the ocf yeah. gels are bigger than click gels so now if you're talking about the original click gels the ones that are like a three piece that have like that you can change out the um the little uh, gel pieces with the ring. Yes, that can go, that can go inside. So I think that might be what you're asking. If you're actually asking about OCF, you can't put OCF gels inside of this. It's um, the diameter's too big. Uh, these, the A series uh, size opening for the A series is 70 millimeters. Uh, all of the rest of our stuff, B, D, Pro is 100 millimeters. So the OCF is 100 millimeter, won't fit in there. But again, if you're, if you're talking about the original, Gel kit for like the A1, yes, 100%. It'll go totally, totally uh, magnetized inside there. So, cool. And um, he says, I mean, over the front, like a grid holder. Over the front, like a grid holder. Uh, no, because it's still, um, it's still too small. Like, 
uh, you can't really put anything on the inside or the outside that's OCF with this. Um, the the only way that like OCF works with the A series, if you're working with uh, the adapter to take an A series, a smaller uh, diameter head to the larger OCF size head. So there's as far as uh, with the click line, there's really no. The, here's the only uh, here's the only kind of like one that would do something like that. So if you have the OCF adapter, right, and you want to put. Uh, like an OCF softbox here and use your A10 or your uh, A2 right there. On the inside of the OCF adapter, it has a click magnetizing portion to it, but there's no way to put the actual OCF stuff into the click softboxes and stuff like that. Hopefully I clarified. If I didn't, my apologies. Just ask it again. I'll try to fix it. Uh, cool. And then same thing with the, with the Magnum. You can stack... The gel's on the outside, no problem. And this won't be that big of a deal. There's not really a lot of weight here to add any leverage uh, to pull down on the thing, so you don't have to worry about that falling off. So, But that's how you would do that. You would gel the uh, the light first, and then you'd put the magnum on the top of it. So it would go A2 or A10, and then magnum, just like that. Cool. Sweet. Any other questions so far? Can we have barn doors for these little lights? We have barn doors for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we, we have barn doors. Uh, where are my barn doors? Here are my barn doors. Yeah, we made barn doors for them. Sorry, it says Facebook user for some reason. Sorry, yeah, the, not the up on here. our little aggregate, our little aggregator doesn't uh for some reason show the Facebook things, but there's barn doors right there. I think we launched. When did we launch these things? Last year, sometime. Oh, oh no, we didn't launch them yet. Yeah, oh, we didn't. <gasps> oh, I'd be in so much trouble right now. My phone would be ringing. Um, you guys don't know this, but a lot of times I have new stuff. It's in my frame somewhere. Um, but, uh, the, the, those, ma those magnums have been sitting right here on my magnetic board that I walk to all the time. Uh, so cool. Uh, yeah, we've had barn doors. So right there, click barn doors. We have a, we launched the barn doors and the snoot together and then the magnet and stuff came later. Uh, cool. Um, sweet. Now that we've talked about gels. We've talked about the right way of securing your stuff. Sorry that I came to the side and, and that was a side show to me. Uh, we've talked about the gels. We've talked about the proper way of securing uh, your lights to your soft boxes and using accessories as well. Let's take some photos so you can see what these things look like. So I'm going to do most of the stuff with the A2, although I'd be more than happy to do it with the A10, but I'm going to do most of it with the A2 just because uh, I can move around pretty fast with it. So... The first shot we're going to take with the A2 is going to be just um, just the bare head. That way you can actually see how the reflector itself, because we're going to start with the magnum reflector, that way you can see how the reflector itself is going to change the look, how much coverage you're going to get, and stuff like that. So let's go A2 right here. I'm going to make sure I have other lights that are on. I want to make sure they're off so it doesn't affect the shot. I'm generally pretty good about forgetting that I have other lights on. So here we go. Let's close down the softbox for a second. The nice thing about the click stuff, I mean, the the setup and breakdown of these softboxes is just bonkers. It's if you've ever if you ever try to put together like an RFI four four foot octa, which is my, it's my favorite modifier. It's it's what I have as my like that right there. That's an RFI four foot uh, four foot. Yeah. Wow. Couldn't talk. That's my favorite softbox, but you know, it takes elbow grease. So cool. Let's get the camera. Can we just stand like? No, you can just stand. Can you can stand. You can stand forward because it's really good. It's mostly about the coverage than it is anything else. So cool. I'm probably gonna shoot this three quarters. You'll be able to see that the A2 is gonna cover quite a bit. Let's make sure that we're not in standby mode anymore. There we go. Do we okay? Okay, he has a question about like the light pattern stuff, so we might have to pull that up. Cool. Uh, someone has a question. Question has uh, someone has a question about light patterns. We will talk about that momentarily. Just want to kind of get my light. Just want it to be a little more centered. That's pretty good. Here we go. So let's go. I'm just going to go into TTL mode because things have changed up a little bit. Here we go. Three, two, one. So that's the A2, just bare bulb, 
You'll see it pop up here in a second. That's A2 bare bulb. You can see it's uh, good coverage. Uh, power level, just so you know, because we're gonna, so we're gonna start documenting the amount of light that you're saving. So you're at nine and a half. So at Kate right now is probably what, eight feet from it? Yes. Eight feet from the light, uh, from her easily. We're at nine and a half power at like at 5.6 ISO 100. I think you can see all that stuff. Uh, no, you can't see it. Uh, 5.6 F, um, or ISO 100, one over 125th of a second. So those are my settings. That's the distance. Cool. Now let's throw on the Magnum and see how that changes. And we're going to stay in TTL mode again, because now that we're getting more efficient, we should gain about 1.8 stops more light output. So we go three, two, one. So cool. So we've now dropped down to 8.2 on the power output. So we've gained some, some light back. It's a little more pointed out. There's a little more vignetting in the shot, as you can see, starting to creep in. Um, it looks a touch overexposed. I could compensate that down, uh, but I'm not going to because the others are pretty similar there. So now let's throw the grid on there and see how much that affects the shot. So this is a 20 degree grid. It should vignette out quite a bit. I want to just make sure that's pointed at Kate. Does that look like it's pointing at your face or does it look like it's pointing over? It might be right over the top, okay. actually. It, from here, it looks the same. Go down just a little bit. Too low? Too low? Good. Cool. Perfect. Three, two, one. Cool, and you can see it's gonna vignette out even more, and that's just what a grid does. It's gonna take that light, it's gonna point it out. Uh, really, really cool, and the, the dope thing about the, the clicker, it comes with it. So you're getting your grid with the, the reflector. It's awesome, so you have the ability, even though you don't have the zooming that you would have from, uh, even though you don't have the zooming that you would have from something like the traditional magnum reflector or the OCF reflector, being able to vary that light spread is very, very nice, and it's included, which is really, really cool. So the, the Click Magnum, I'm, I'm very, very, very excited about. With that being said, let's talk softboxes. Um, let's throw on the, the original softbox first. I think we're gonna do some comparisons. And the main thing that you're gonna wanna look for are shadows. That's gonna be the biggest comparison or the biggest tell in the size of the softboxes, especially, um, I'm, gonna bring the, I'm gonna bring the lights in a little bit closer because, uh, Soft boxes eat up a little bit of light, okay? And we were already at 9.5 there with the bare head, so I'm gonna come in just a little bit closer. Plus, you want soft boxes to be relatively close just because the size of the modifier in relationship to your subject is going to dictate how hard or soft that light is. Uh, so you always wanna try to get your soft boxes as close as you can, uh, but just something to keep in mind. So, two foot first. Here's another, uh, for people who are using A2s, um, like on location again, I know we were talking about doing the little tether setup. You could also just leave the uh, A2 on the stand and just attach it like this and leave this free. Uh, that's another way of making sure that the A2 is always secured to a stand. So something to think about. So cool. Well, you ready to go, Kate? Yeah, I'm in. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick, I'm gonna kick this light off a little bit to the side just because I want the shadow to start coming in so we can compare how it's gonna uh, kind of dissipate a little bit. So let's make sure. That Am I, that isn't my shot, but it's okay. Let's back it out just a touch. Cool. So this is the original OCF Octa. Probably five feet from you. Yeah. Cool. Three, two, one. Nice, soft light. Really, really cool. Love it. Shadow you can see. Perfect. So let's bring in the 2.3. I've sat like all the soft boxes everywhere as I've been moving around all crazy. So I have to remember where I sat each one of them. This is the 2.3, as the side says. So. Cool. So 2.3. Here we go. Three, two, one. And uh, the difference in the light, I know you can't really, you can see how close it is compared to where it was, 
But with the soft boxes, again, you have to remember that the diffusion eats up a lot of light and we're at 9.3. So we're pretty high on that actual power level right here. So let's go to the big boy. And this is a really nice soft box. It's almost three feet, which is a really good size. It's, it's one of my favorite, like three feet is one of my favorite sizes for uh, singular portraits. I, you know, four foot's my absolute favorite, but I do like the three foot size. I use the, um, the OCF three foot for a lot of stuff. And so actually having this kind of click setup is really, really cool to run around with my A2 instead of having to run with like my A2 and my OCF adapter and stuff like that. But I still, I still love to use the A2 with my three foot octum. So here we go. Three, two, one. Cool. So that's all three of the soft boxes. So I'm gonna bring my computer up. We're gonna compare some stuff and we're gonna answer any questions that you might have about anything. And make sure that all that stuff's cleared up. Perfect. Sometimes I leave my camera right or camera in my camera angle. Here we go. Uh, it says barn doors ordered. Thanks for us. <laughs> <laughs> glad glad I can help you out. It was so fast with your barn door request. Uh, it's you know I try to work at lightning speed for you. Yeah. Cool. So let's go to the magnum reflector shots first. Let's go full screen so we can get all this extra stuff. All right, out of here. So cool. With the Magnum, again, the big thing that you're going to get is the increased light output from your A series light, right? So we were at a power level of 9.5. We right here on this first shot. Second shot here, just by putting the Magnum on, we dropped to a power level of 8. Point, I think we are like 8.3. So that's, you know, 1.2, 1.3-ish stops gained. So, and that's huge. Again, from the perspective of one, if you need more power, you can turn up, right? So you can turn the power level up and that's going to um, give you more output on location if you're battling some ambient light. But if you're inside, like we are here in the studio, it gives me the option to be able to back the light up further if I want to, if I want more coverage. It gives me the ability to uh, keep the power level low and maintain some of my battery life. So those are some things you can think about of the, you know, the benefits of the Magnum. It's not just in its actual output, it's in the battery savings that you could potentially have. Very cool stuff. And then if you want to take that light and tighten it up and get this nice tight spotlight, the 20 degree grid comes with it. So you can just pop that onto the front and you're good to go. And again, if you wanna throw some you know, creative gels in there, some fun colors, or if you need to uh, use some color corrective gels to match your ambient light outside, throw the gel into the front of the light, click the Magnum onto the front of it, and you're good to go. And that's also something that's cool about the Magnum too, thinking about it in the output makeup, is all of any gel, anytime you put something uh, for the most part in front of your, not every single time, but almost every time that you put something in front of your light, that the light has to kind of process through, it's gonna take a little bit of energy away and gels do that. So the more saturated a gel is, so like a half stop of CTO isn't gonna take up as much light as a full stop of CTO, but it is still gonna take up some light. So having the magnum reflector in there to help out make up some of the light loss from the gels, huge. I didn't even think about that until right now, but that's awesome. So now let's talk about the differences in the soft boxes. So again, one of the, the biggest places that you're gonna see the softness change is obviously gonna be inside the shadows. That's what the soft light does. It starts to kind of fill in and blend in some of those shadows. Starts to, since the light's getting bigger, the shadow, the lines of demarcation start to kind of feather out. And you can see that here. So this is the original two foot OCF or two foot click octa. Then we go to the 2.3. And if you just look at the shadow in the background right here, look how much that's actually starting to dissipate. And then you get right here to the larger, the 2.7 or the 31 inch click octa. And it's starting to smooth out quite a bit. So let's go see if we can go in here to like shadows around the nose. Yeah. I'm trying to trying to see if I can find a, a good shadow to compare to over here on the face. We kind of broad lit you instead of short lit you. And that's okay. But okay, so maybe like right here around the hat. So you can see right here that line's a little sharper. Right here, it's starting to kind of feather out a little bit more. And then right here, it's starting to feather out even more. There's less contrast there. So again, 
That's the main thing you're gonna start getting with the soft boxes is you're just gonna get more coverage, more feathering of those shadows. It's gonna be a little more even, a, a little more flattering. Again, the size of the modifier in relationship to the subject. So if you like to pull back a little bit more, maybe you need to go with the bigger soft box to give you that same softness that you would get from the smaller one closer. So just things to think about, but they're all really, really cool modifiers. Again, if you're working with the click soft box in an area where there's high traffic or you move a lot, if you're, you know, if, if you kind of are real creative and, and whimsical on the way that you work, you're like, oh, I want to be here and there and stuff. Do something to secure your light to the stand. Or if you're working with the A2, stand mount your A2 and then put the click softbox over the front of that and let the click softbox fall off if, if something, if it would get jostled really hard and the, the softbox fall off. Do it that way with the A10. Get some sort of, again, you can use, um, I don't even know where I set my fun little wrist strap down thing at, but, uh, oh, it's, it's over here. So with the A10, you kind of go the opposite route. Just to show you this really fast. No, I'm, I know I'm, I'm running all over the world. So with the A10, you can do something kind of the opposite. So with my A2, I usually take my, I didn't fasten it down super hard on my A2, so it came off pretty easily. But um, if you take this and you actually screw it into the quarter 20 at the bottom, you can, I've sl slung my A2 around in circles, no problems. But what you can do here with the A10 is you can actually take the wrist strap portion of it. Someone was asking the name of this tether again. Uh, this is just a peak design wrist strap. Uh, uh, peak design they make really really cool stuff but they, the thing I like about it is it has these little it all attaches with these funky little dots and so you could take one of these dots so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here so with the a10 you could take one of these little dots take this thing off so you can see what I'm talking about come on come on come on come on love me there we go let's go in here closer here so you can take one of these dots right and you can just throw it around here around this thing and then click it into place. So cool, so when you have something here, like the softbox kind of clamping it into place, let's do this. I'd like soft, this, this one's probably, I could lengthen this out some. So there, so now, it's a little high, it's a little high yeah. So now, again, I use this mostly with my A2, because my A2 is usually what I'm running on the road with. So then again, that's kind of pulling on a little bit, but you can see that if this falls, it's going to go there, right? It's not going to go to the ground and splat. So um, you can do some cool stuff with these things. The little peak design things are, they rock. I like them. Uh, again, I use this for my A2 all the time. Um, someone is asking, is the handle of the softbox stopping you from tilting the light down anymore while you're shooting? I'm so the handle of the softbox can stop you. So they're asking, is the handle of the softbox stopping you from tilting the light down. So if I turn the softbox, uh, so like here, I think this might be what you're talking about. So like if I'm mounted this way, the way that, oh yeah, to the side. So if, if I'm mounted this way, the way that, um, that I could easily snap on the different softboxes and show you, uh, it, it, yes, if I'm trying to tilt this way, it can, but you could just do that. And then you could tilt it. You could just kick the handle out. And the cool thing is it's, not bigger than a softbox, so it's not like it's like jutting out from anything. So yes, it is in the way if you're using it the way that I'm using it right now. But again, you can just turn the softbox, no big deal. Uh, but if you've mounted the light to the softbox and the softbox to the handle, like this, then there's a little, let's come in here so you can see it. There's a little button right here, cool? And you click that button and now you can adjust it on the light stand. So like if my hands, the light stand, you can adjust it like this. So that's what there's a, it's kind of like a hidden little sneaky button in there, but you can grab that. You can adjust it. Cool. Let's see. And uh, someone's asking if we could do the Magnum outside. We will do the Magnum outside today's, uh, it, we're probably going to get some rain here, but it's, it's spotty here in the South. So, uh, but we will be using the Magnum outside. We have some, we have some stuff lined up. So, uh, yes, there will be Magnum outside. And then also we have, um, I wish pro photo would make a soft box like the click system for the B tens. I would Check. love to have a system that would, um, as fast as the click system for the B tens instead of spending minutes putting together those. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, totally agree. I will let our R and D team know I, if, if you ever have any requests for anything, let me know. Pop them up here. Pop them up here. Yeah. 
message me with any of your requests. Uh, just like for the longest time, if I'm being super honest, I didn't think we were ever going to have a life remote. I just didn't think we were. The But enough people over time showed us that it's worth making a like remote and we made one so that's the way it works so just the more boisterous you are about it and saying like hey like this is something that we really really need to do our jobs that's the way of doing it so send all of them to me i i literally message our r d team all the time with stuff so send it to me I'd be more than happy to talk to you about it any other questions see, uh, I'm trying to see if i missed anything if i have pop it back down here yeah if we missed your if we missed your question we'll we'll hang here for another like 60 seconds um, ask your question. I, I just saw it move. I don't know if some if something popped up, Kate. When are we getting strip boxes? When are we getting strip boxes? Uh, hopefully, hopefully in the near future. I, I would love to see some strip boxes. Yeah. Okay. And he says Chris uh, got a lot of sports. Clip three, four foot strips would be amazing. Four foot strips. Check. I I, I agree with you. There's there's a lot of things that. There's a Carl sent this, that to us. So there's a lot of things that I also uh, am pushing forward to. So for the most part, a lot of the times, if you'll say that you would like to see something, if I haven't said anything about it and I go, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. I, I keep pushing for it. So again, any ideas of things you'd like to see, let us know. I'll send it up. But uh, strips are very important. Anything else? Are we good? I think we're good. Sweet. Yeah. So it's cool. Again, really, really cool modifiers. We're going to do some more expanding on um, taking these things outside, really, really testing them, showing you how they work with the ambient light, uh, definitely showing you what you can do with the magnum reflector outside with like the A2 and the A10. Um, I'd love, I'm probably going to do some like on camera stuff uh, with the magnum just so we can see what the magnum looks like on camera. I think that'd be a, it's a really fun way of actually using it. So, Again, a lot of stuff that we're going to keep exploring um, and you just keep having a good time. Uh, in the meantime, anything else pop up before I, I sign? I'm about to do the sign off thing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's very, very fun. Oh, yes, oh. it does come with the grid. Yeah, someone was asking, does it come with the grid? Yes. Magnum reflector comes with the grid. The soft boxes do not. You have to buy the grid separately. If you're not a grid person, uh, don't buy the grid. Uh, if you are a grid person, get the grid, if that helps. Sorry, I'm just making Oh, she's getting crazy. Yep, yeah, she's going. She's Anyways. going. She's going mad with the. Don't mind. Don't mind. Just proceed. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So uh, that's a, that's actually a good thing though. Again, uh, grids for the soft boxes are sold separately because some people like those, some people don't like those. So you get to pick that kind of stuff. The the grids with the Magnum, I think people are going to find more use out of that than they weren't. It's a really really cool addition. I'm actually super stoked that it's inside the case. So with that being said, have an awesome rest of your week. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, you can message us in the chat section. Uh, we'll be more than happy to talk to you. You can DM me if you'd like to. You can DM Profoto if you'd like to. Love to talk to you about anything. In the meantime, have an awesome rest of your week. We'll see you next time. Peace out, everybody.